and in the olive tree, Israel, both Jew and Gentile, reaching out to all the world with many signs. The Word of God in Habakkuk, chapter 3, verse 2 says, Adonai, I've heard the report about you, and I have come to fear. Adonai, revive your work throughout the years. Throughout the years, make it known. In wrath, remember mercy. In wrath, remember compassion. Beloved, as we're standing on the Mount of Olives, and as we've been watching the fourth lunar eclipse of the Tetrad, the four blood moons, that have appeared on Passover 2014, Sukkot Tabernacles 2014, on Passover 2015, Sukkot Tabernacles 2015, and we have determined that these are signs in the heavens. Joel chapter 3 says those lunar eclipses and also the sun eclipses that happened in between the lunar eclipses. There were two full sun eclipses. He said that the sun will be turned to darkness and the moon will be turned to blood before the terrible day of Adonai that will be coming. And as we're standing here on the Mount of Olives, sighting the blood moon, sighting the fourth blood moon, realizing that it's a message that God has is, is given us. And I've already told you that it is not about the wrath and the judgment poured upon Israel. Israel has suffered the wrath of God. Israel has suffered the judgment of God. We have been exiled from this land already two times. With the Assyrian exile, it's actually three because of the northern kingdom. We have been treated terrible in the nations. There is museums of Holocaust all over the world. There are in Washington, D.C., of course, in Jerusalem, in Florida, in different places of the world to, to make us remember what has happened to the Jewish people, what the nations have done to annihilate us. This is not about the judgment of Israel. God has not brought us back to our land to destroy us. He brought us back to our land to save us. I am an example of that prophetic word, fulfilled, saved, and spirit-filled in the land of Israel. When Yeshua came to speak to me personally at the waters of the Sea of Galilee and called me to his service. And I'm going to tell you the truth is that this is about Joel chapter 4 when it says that at the time that Yahweh restores the fortunes of Israel and Judah and brings us back to the land after 2,000 years of exile, then he will put the nations in the valley of Jehoshaphat, the valley of judgment, because they've divided up the land of Israel and scattered the people of Israel out of the land. And truly that valley of judgment is already happening since 1948. Since 1948, the 14th of May, when Israel established as a state among the nations, the reborn Israel here, from that moment, Lord, the Lord begins to look at the nations to put them in the valley of judgment. How are they going to treat the reborn state of Israel? And so, yes, the nations of the world are greatly sinned against us. They have called good evil and evil good. They've called our enemies good, and they've called us evil. And I'll tell you the truth is that right now, there's nations that are on the verge of collapse. Greece and all the European Union, the euro is about to go down. The stock exchange in America has been shaking already at the end of the Shemitah, the year of Shabbat, of rest for the land, as has been prophesied by other prophets as well. And I'll tell you the truth is that the nations of the world right now are suffering collapses and calamities and earthquakes and terrible happenings, and they're coming more and more frequently. So we are here to repent for the nations. We are here to cry out that in wrath, Elohim may remember mercy. The sign of the blood moons is actually a sign of judgment to the nations and of favor to Israel. The sign of the blood moons, it says, because on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, Joel chapter 3 tells us in verse 5, in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem, there will be those who escape the wrath and the judgment of the coming day of Adonai. 
and even the survivors whom the Lord has called. And all of this nation is a nation of survivors. We have survivors of every kind of inquisition, every kind of holocaust, every kind of persecution. In the name of Jesus Christ and in the name of Allah, we have been persecuted. Praise God that nobody has persecuted us in the name of Yeshua. But I can tell you right now that Christianity and Islam have persecuted the Jewish people. And right now in the end of times, Obadiah says, as you've done to them, it shall be done to you. And so right now we have to cry out for mercy. As, as a Jew, as an Israeli apostle, as, a, as an Israeli apostle, prophet of Adonai, a spirit of a messianic apostolic prophetic movement throughout the nations, I'm here standing in the gap together with my husband and other Israelis standing in the gap so that in wrath Elohim may remember mercy over the nations and that the nations will arise and bless Israel and cover Israel with prayer, especially the Christians in the nations, and with action towards the restoration of Israel. The Bible speaks about sheep nations, but I didn't know we would have an encounter with the living God. My wife and I, the bishop, were in Santiago, Chile, in a hotel room. She was outside praying, and I was reading the Bible on the kitchen table, and she comes in excited, and she says, Rabbi, God just spoke to me. I said, well, what did he say? He says, what would happen if I came back today, how many nations would be sheep nations and how many nations would be goat nations? I said, well, well, what did he mean? He says, well, this is how I'm going to judge the nations, how they treat my Jewish people and Israel and if they keep my righteous laws and commandments. I said, well, what do you tell the Lord? She says, I said, Lord, there's no sheep nations. Don't come back just yet. Give us some time. So that's the reason my wife and I are going throughout the United States to awake America so that America can become a sheep nation. Can you say together with me today, Baruch Haba, B'Shem Adonai, Yeshua, Haba, B'Shem Adonai. There is going to be a people here waiting for him, beloved. And they will say, blessed is he that comes in the name of the Lord. And we are going to pray right now that we will be ready. But we're also going to pray that the nations will be ready. And we're going to pray that every nation that you are representing can be ready. Especially nations that have come against Israel. They need to be ready because the Valley of Judgment, the Valley of Jehoshaphat, Malachi 4, is waiting. And this is terrifying because the day of the Lord is terrifying. But there can't be repentance. And the Lord said in Ezekiel 22:31 that He's looking for someone to stand in the gap, to make up the hedge for the land that He may not destroy it. So let's begin right now to pray and to stand in the gap. Hallelujah. First of all, we're going to pray for Israel. And then we're going to pray and everyone of you will pray for your nations and begin to ask forgiveness from God for rejecting Yeshua, for rejecting Israel, for coming against the covenant land, for coming against the covenant people. Begin to ask forgiveness. Hallelujah. Father, we stand here in this place and we are humbled to know that you have put a show in the heavens just for us. We are humbled to know, Lord God Almighty, that you are telling us a story today. You are telling us tonight a prophetic message. You are telling us what is written in the prophet Joel, that it says that there will be lunar eclipses and sun eclipses before the day of the coming of the terrible day of the Lord. And that terrible day is the day of judgment and distress and vengeance. It is a day, and you said that the nations will be put in the valley of judgment because they have divided up the land of Israel and they've scattered the people of Israel. And we're standing here, a Lord God, representing 12 different nations, including Israel. And we come before you, Lord, and we ask you for mercy, Father. We ask you that in wrath you will remember mercy, Father. We ask you that you will wake up, that you will wake up Israel, and that you will wake up every nation to understand that this is this is a sign from you this is not just astronomy this is the God of heaven that put the signs from Genesis 1 14 and he says I am putting the Sun and the moon and the stars as signs 
as signs and as wonders and as testimonials and as divine seasons and divine timings. Father, we realize that this being the eighth tetrad, since the crucifixion of Yeshua, the eighth tetrad, the sign of the covenant number eight and the sign of eternity. And we know, Father God, that this being the eighth tetrad that falls on Passover and Sukkot, it's talking about the first feast and the last feast of the biblical cycle. And therefore, we are dealing here with Yeshua saying, I'm the first and I'm the last. I have the first word and I have the last word. It doesn't matter who rises up or what nation rises up with any kind of unbiblical policy. I have got the first word and I have got the last word. Adonai, you've got the last word. We are in the last days and we say, you have the last word. You have the last word. And even though Iran is saying to annihilate us and ISIS wants to destroy us and all of Islam wants to swallow us alive, we say, you have the last word and you brought us to this land to rescue us, to save us in this land, in the land of Israel, to pour out your water, your clean water, to, to cleanse us from all unrighteousness and to give us a new heart and a new spirit and to put your commandments inside of us so that we will be your people and you will be our Elohim again. And Father, as a Jew, as an Israeli, as a believer in the Messiah of Israel, Yeshua, the Jewish Messiah, I'm asking you today that in wrath you remember mercy of every nation that is represented in this place, and that you remember mercy, and that you awake those nations, that the shofar blow from Israel will be heard in every nation, and there will be teshuvah, there will be repentance, there will be repentance, so that many can be rescued before the day of Adonai, so that many can be rescued, Lord, that in wrath you remember mercy. Oh, I give you praise. Oh, I give you praise. All the Christian churches of Papua New Guinea, Adonai, we pray, Adonai, we repent. If they have raised their voices against your people, Adonai, your land, Adonai, and your covenant people, Adonai, we pray that you will forgive them. You will forgive them, Adonai. You will forgive them. Cause their hearts to teshuva and embrace your people. Adonai, you will cause the nations around Israel to the hands of the earth, Adonai, to recognize the covenant that you have made with them, Adonai. You have caused them to be the light and not the curse. Adonai. And the gentle nations will see the light in them and will call upon your name and they shall be saved. Adonai. Father, you have put the nations surrounding Israel for them to learn of your ways, to be learned to learn of your commands, to receive your instructions, your statutes and your covenants and your commandments, Adonai. They will make the shuva, Adonai. You will remove the heart of stone, Adonai. You will give them the heart of flesh, Adonai. Mira los padres, míranos con misericordia. Aquí estamos en tu tierra, en tu monte, Abba Padre. Abba Padre, tú has prometido, Padre eterno, al que te busca, al que te clama, Señor, escuchar desde tu santo templo. Ahora que vemos estas señales, Padre, y tú nos has dado entendimiento, aquí estamos para pedirte perdón, Padre, para que extiendas tu misericordia sobre nuestras naciones, Abba Kadosh. Adonai, forgive me and my nation for how we have treated Israel. We have snubbed her. We have downcast her. We have betrayed her. We have gone against her. And I ask for your forgiveness, Adonai, as a nation, as one who belongs to that nation, the United States. Forgive us, Father God. Forgive us. I ask for your grace. I ask for your grace for Estonia. I ask for your grace for Estonian people. 
You are the first and the last, and your word is always the last. There is little time left, and I, I just, I just ask for your grace that Estonia could become a sheep nation. Y por tu misericordia que es eterna e infinita, yo te pido por la nación de Ecuador. Te pido, Padre, perdona nuestro pecado, porque hemos levantado espada, hemos tenido en menos, no hemos tenido misericordia de la nación de Israel. Yo te pido, Padre, perdón el pecado de mi nación, perdón por el pecado de mis antepasados, perdón, Padre, porque hemos dejado tu Torá, perdón, Padre, porque no le bendecimos a la nación de Israel y menospreciamos a tu pueblo. For all the sins that we have been doing against Israel, especially for the Oslo Accords, Yale. Forgive us, forgive us, for we have deeply sinned. We have been opening for so much terror in Israel, so much damage, so much sorrow. Forgive us, forgive us, Yale, forgive us. And we declare, Father, that that our nation will arise and will be an Esther church in these latter days, Father. And this this time they will not stay quiet. They will come and and they will support Israel, Father. And that your, they will bless your people. They will they will fulfill that promise in Genesis. I will bless those who bless you, and Mexico will be blessed because they will come bless and help Israel, Father. In Yeshua's mighty name, we declare blessings to these people, to your land. I just pray, my God, for the government, that Holland will have a government that will love Israel and, and yeah, and uh, love you, Lord God, that they will become a sheep nation. Forgiveness, because Brazil turned their hearts. They not anymore support Israel. At the last year when the war, we had the war, our president was the first country that closed the embassy in Israel. And I told, and I sent a message to Brazil because judgment will come and famine will come. And Brazil more than ever is facing famine. And I want to witness that is such a, such a crisis in Brazil that people they are even eating rats. They are very desperate. Everything is consequence. And I want to ask you, Father, in the name of Yeshua, Amen. we come to this land to Amen. humble ourselves before you in behalf of Brazil. And we come to ask you forgiveness because we have turned away from you. We want to humble before you, Father, and ask you, Father, that you restore Brazil. And we ask you that you heal this land and that they will turn again to support Israel and to be with Israel and be one with Israel. As a Christian, as a believer in Messiah, I invite you to come into the land of Israel, not as a regular tourist, no, because you are a son or a daughter that needs to come back home. Israel is the spiritual home for all the believers in Yeshua worldwide. And this is what the Bible School on Wheels is. It is a different notion than Christian tourism. It is spiritual aliyah. Spiritual aliyah means to make ascension to the land of Israel, to have a divine encounter with God in His land, to get the heart of Elohim God for the land and for the people of Israel. It is a tour, but it is a Bible school. It is a happening. And I can tell you one thing for sure, not one person that comes lives the same. Everyone has a tremendous transformation. Don't miss the next one. It is coming right up, so register now. You see, these people have been standing in the gap here for every one of their nations. They've come to our Bible School on Wheels, Sukkot Tour of Israel, to be able to be part of this act of repentance for the nations here on the Mount of Olives, on the year of Jubilee, the year of Yovel, the year of the sound of the shofar, the shofar that is blowing for the redemption of the entire land of Israel. 
when in Leviticus 25 it says that the land needs to be restored during the year of Jubilee and we are to go back to our inheritance and to return. And this is exactly what's happening here on the Mount of Olives. The shofars are blowing. The year of Jubilee is being released. The force of the year of favor is being released in spite the, the four blood moons is favor to Zion because Yeshua is standing for the restoration of Israel. And the nations that have sided against her are in the valley of judgment, in the valley of Jehoshaphat, as we've established according to Joel chapter 4 and Isaiah chapter 34 and verse 8 and Obadiah that says, as you have done to my people Israel, it shall be done to you. The word of God says that in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, it says, if my people that are called by my name, humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin and I will heal their land. And we are here as humble people from 12 different nations, including Israel, Israel and the 12th nation. We are here from 12 different nations, maybe even more right now because we have Brazil, so maybe 12 plus Israel. We are from 12 different nations and we are repenting. People have repented for their sins of their nations concerning Israel. They have cried out for mercy before the God of Israel at the time that he's given us a sign in the heavens. They have done what Second Chronicles 7.14 says. And it's not only right now in this act, but they will continue doing it in the nations. And as it says in Isaiah chapter 62 verse 1, it's about Zion's sake. I will not keep silent. Can we say it all together? For Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. And the call of repentance, the call of teshuvah, which means returning and repentance for the purpose of restoration. And it means teshuvah, it means the answer to all things. The answer to the problems in every one of your nations is teshuvah, is returning to the Jewish roots of the faith, to be grafted into the olive tree, to be standing with Israel. And it is restoration that's coming from that place. As my book, The Healing Power of the Root states, as you drink from the rich root of the olive tree, there will be healing to the nations because no nation and no Christianity and no denomination that understand that Yeshua is the Jewish Messiah and is completely identifying with his people Israel, no nation will be able to stand against Israel. And no Christianity and no denomination will be able to side with the enemies of Israel that have outspokenly said that they want to annihilate us. And just like the Hitler of the time, there wasn't heard and the nations didn't pay attention. And six million Jews later, it was too late. Now it's time to wake up before that happens. It's time to wake up for the nations because this time, as it's been done to us in years past to the Israelites, and then it will be done for the nations. Instead of a holocaust for Israel, a holocaust is prepared for the nations of the world. Do you think that ISIS is going to stop in Israel? No, Israel will be defended and will be rescued by the Most High God. But your nations have no promise of defense and rescue unless there is repentance. The nation of Israel will be rescued. There is always going to be Israel. In the book of Joel at the end of the last chapter, chapter 4, it says, And Judah will be established forever. And Jerusalem from generation to generation. But it doesn't say anything about Singapore and about the UK or the USA or Papua New Guinea or Ecuador or Peru or Brazil or Estonia or Finland or Norway. It doesn't say absolutely anything about those nations. It says Judah will be forever established. But the nations of the world that are right now in the valley of Jehoshaphat can choose life through Teshuvah, through repentance for the way they've treated Israel. And repentance is not only, oh Lord, forgive us. Repentance is an action of restitution and of standing with this nation for its restoration. Isaiah 62 verse 1, for Zion's sake, I will not keep silent. Actively work for the restoration of the church, the bride of Messiah, and actively work for the restoration of your nations. But first and foremost, actively work for the restoration of Israel. Genesis 12, 3, I will bless those who bless her. Amen? Amen. Let's pray.
Say with me, Father in heaven. Today I've stood in the gap to repent for my nation, for the sins committed against Israel and against you, the God of Israel. And now, Father God, I take one more step. And actually take the step. I take one more step. And I will actively work for Zion's sake. For Zion's sake. I will not keep silent until all of Israel is saved. And I actively take a step to cooperate with this vision and mission of awaking the USA and the nations of the world so that they can come out from the valley of judgment and become sheep nations. I am, I am here, Lord. And we're going to say like Isaiah said, Hineni Adonai. Hineni means here I am, Lord. Amen. One, two, three. Hineni Adonai. Let's say it so loud that everybody can hear you all the way to your nation. One, two, three. Hineni Adonai. Woo! Let somebody blow that shofar right now as we finish this act with a good Hineni Adonai. Grab those shofars. Rabbi Baruch, where are you, please? Come here. And let's have Rabbi lead you in the show for a blow. This is the hour to proclaim, Awake USA! America is entering the Valley of Judgment for siding with Israel's enemies, for departing from the principles of God's Word and the Constitution of the Founding Fathers. And now, God has sent Israeli Jewish Apostles Dominika and Baruch Bierman to stand in the gap for America with an urgent mission divine strategy called Awake USA, with prayer and intercession events hosted at the local level across the country. It's Awake USA during the election year leading into 2016, which coincides with the Biblical Hebrew Year of Jubilee. Participate by hosting an Awake USA event to focus on repentance for your city, state, and nation. For more information, contact us at 1-972-301-7087 or through our website at awakeusa.tv. To host an Awake USA event, call now 1-972-301-7087 or go to our website awakeusa.tv.